to the combustion of fossil fuels and other activities of our industrial society is leading to the emission of greenhouse gases. We know that these greenhouse gases will have a profound effect on our climate, our health, and, our, and will threaten our way of life. So we need to do something about this. There's two kinds of things we can do. We can do this on a national, state, and international level. And that's what we'll talk about in this section, climate change policy. And we can do this on an individual or community level. And that's what we'll talk about in the next section when we look at individual action. There are two classes of actions we can take to deal with climate change. One is to adapt to climate change. Climate change is already happening, and we're sure that climate change will become uh, even more profound in the future. And therefore, we need to do many things in order to protect our water resources, our coastal areas, our crops, and uh, the health of people in our countries and the health of people internationally. So those would be ways of adapting to the realities of climate change. Very important activity for all of us and for international cooperative action. The other response to climate change is to mitigate climate change. This means to reduce the effects of climate change to actually stop climate change. So this would involve a number of possible actions. We'll look at those uh, in this presentation and we'll look at the ways that those actions can be implemented on a state, national, and international level. The second thing we need to do after we've decided that we need to make some real efforts to mitigate climate change, reduce the effects of climate change, reduce the actual climate amount of climate change that takes place, is to set a mitigation goal. That is, we, we should know what we're trying to do and how much of it we're trying to accomplish. And we're going to begin by defining some possible mitigation goals. Before we try to define climate mitigation goals, let's review the basics of climate change. Climate change is caused by the consumption of fossil fuels and the, the resultant emission of large amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. There are certainly other greenhouse gases other than carbon dioxide, but we'll focus on carbon dioxide in this discussion. About 50% of the CO2 that is emitted into the atmosphere by our activities stays in the atmosphere. The other half of CO2 emissions are absorbed into the land, into, taken up by plants and end up in the soil, or is taken up by the ocean. So there is a result of the emission of CO2 by fossil fuel consumption, there is a steady buildup of CO2 concentration. One of the results of the buildup of CO2 concentration is global warming. So we, we measured and clearly see that the globe has warmed uh, during the time since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. There are certainly other indicators of climate change and there are other components of climate change but a quite clear indicator is global temperature so there are three things we can look at we can look at the amount of co2 we're emitting we can look at the amount of co2 in the atmosphere that is the atmospheric concentration of co2 and we can look at global temperature all of these could be indicators used to set a global climate change mitigation goal the Kyoto Protocol is an international treaty that attempts to mitigate climate change. It's, uh, it's a treaty that's just winding down. Uh, it uses as a measure of climate change the amount of CO2 emissions and uh, sets its mitigation goal to reduce CO2 emissions from the countries that participate in this treaty. 
So their target is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions a certain amount below the 1990 level of uh, CO2 emissions. Another uh, international effort that attempts to uh, deal with climate change and mitigate climate change is the Carbon Mitigation Initiative. Their goal is to stabilize CO2 emissions at current levels. So once again, they're looking at CO2 emissions and trying to stabilize them at current levels. Looking at CO2 emissions makes lots of sense because that's something that we know we can measure and we know it's directly related to climate change and it's one way we can try to define a mitigation goal. Eastern itself has signed up as many other colleges and universities have done to a goal of reducing climate change, uh, in, in mitigating climate change, and the goal that, that uh, Eastern has set for itself is to have zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Now, 2050 is a long way away, uh, but uh, Eastern is tracking itself uh, and looking at the emissions that uh, are being produced by the activities of the university every year. So this is one way to mitigate climate change by reducing our uh, CO2 and other greenhouse gas emissions. 350, which is an organization uh, that's dedicated to climate change mitigation, uh, you can find them on, online at 350.org, has uses a different uh, way to define the carbon mitigation goal. Uh, their goal is to lower the CO2 concentration, the atmospheric CO2 concentration, to 350 or less. Remember, the, the value now is about 394, is to bring it down to 350. Based on scientific evidence, they believe anything above 350 is dangerous. We need to bring the, the uh, CO2 concentration in the atmosphere down to 350 or less. Another type of climate change mitigation goal is temperature. So a very popular, uh, generally agreed on uh, climate mitigation goal is to stop global temperature from rising more than two degrees Celsius. So the two degrees Celsius limit. Uh, we've already risen 0.9 degrees since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. So that would really mean to stop climate, the global temperature from rising more than another 1.1 degrees Celsius. So most people agree that that's important. If we go beyond 2 degrees Celsius altogether in climate change, uh, temperature rise and, and global warming, then we've entered a fairly dangerous territory. Now, once a climate mitigation goal has been chosen, then a policy has to be set up to reach that goal, and there has to be a way to implement that policy. Now, I made a joke here. I've, I've, shown, I've shown a black helicopter because some people worry that if we get involved with the UN, so the, an international treaty of some kind to, uh, to mitigate climate change, that the UN black helicopters will be descending into your community, forcing you to obey uh, some international laws. Of course, this is silly. Uh, the treaties that will be set up will be treaties that will be enforced by normal uh, regulations within uh, the states and the uh, federal, at, at the state and federal level. So the, the implementation mechanisms vary. So here's one very popular uh, approach is the cap and trade approach. So you set a uh, a, a cap on how much CO2 can be emitted in the United States, and every carbon emitter, say a uh, coal-burning power plant, has, has the right to emit so much uh, CO2. Uh, some power plants in, install, say, carbon sequestration, so they don't need all of their permits because they're not uh, emitting that much CO2 into the atmosphere. Therefore, they can trade their permits to another entity uh, and make money during that trade. So this is cap and trade policy. It's a policy that's worked very well with air pollution uh, generally in the United States. 
and some people suggest that might be a way to have it work uh, also uh, with CO2 emissions. Another approach, and certainly in some ways the most logical approach, is that emitters, whether they're power companies or automobile drivers, would pay a tax for the amount of CO2 that they emit. And th that tax would then discourage you from from doing that emission, doing that activity, which leads to emission because you don't want to pay the tax. So this would encourage people to find other ways to get the benefit uh, that they want from energy without producing CO2. Uh, the, trouble with, the trouble with taxing CO2 emissions is it's not very popular. Uh, this is a, a picture taken in Australia when there was a proposal to uh, have a carbon tax in Australia. People don't like to be taxed and they don't like to be taxed, particularly on this kind of thing. Another approach and one that we're already using is the command and control approach. So the EPA's uh, tailpipe rule uh, basically is mandating that less CO2 comes out of automobiles by increasing their fuel efficiency. So a similar kind of command and control policy has been implemented by the Obama administration that says that new power plants will have to uh, have limits on the amount of CO2 that they can emit. Uh, and so this is uh, now being, how to set those limits on new power plants is now being discussed. Uh, but this is a way to get this done. Uh, there's no taxation, there's just command and control at specific targets. The, the Kyoto Protocol is an international treaty designed to limit CO2 emissions from countries that participated in this treaty. The United States ended up not participating in this treaty, although we were involved in the early stages of setting it up. We agreed to participate, but the, the, uh, the Senate uh, did not uh, approve the treaty. Uh, the, uh, th this treaty has not been particularly successful. Not every country, or many countries, I should say, didn't meet their emission reduction goals. The other problem with this treaty is that it didn't set any limits on developing countries. So China, which is now the number one CO2 emitter because of its large uh, population and uh, more modernized uh, energy use, uh, is uh, has no limits set. So something new needs to be developed and is in the process of being developed. A UN committee, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, is in the process of writing a extension or improvement on the Kyoto Protocol. The plan is to have something written and agreed on uh, by uh, 2015 and then to have it enforced starting in 2020. So th this replacement for the Kyoto Protocol would involve all countries, both developed countries and less developed countries, so it would involve China, hopefully would involve the United States. Its target is to stop climate change temperature rise from getting above 2 degrees C. Uh, there is some hope that this will help, but most people believe something has to happen really quick uh, for this to really be effective. The UN committee that's developing a, the new treaty that will replace the Kyoto Protocol will after the treaty has been developed, have to have strategies for CO2 reduction. We've listed here in this slide and the next one, 15 different strategies. These come from the Carbon Mitigation Initiative. Each of the strategies would have roughly the same impact on uh, <coughs> CO2 emissions and on climate change mitigation and nine of them would be needed to stabilize CO2 emissions. So let's look at these uh, fairly quickly. Uh, f the first is to double fuel efficiency of 2 billion cars, uh, and we're kind of on the process of doing that in the United States, and uh, certainly uh, globally that's, that's uh, being, being done. Uh, reduce uh, the number of miles traveled by car, and that would be uh, associated with then having more mass transit. Uh, use best efficiency practices in buildings, uh, both residential and, and uh, office buildings. Uh, it's certainly a big move for that kind of energy efficiency. Uh, 
uh, double efficiency of current coal burning power plants. This could be done. Uh, switch to natural gas at uh, a large number of coal plants. Uh, use uh, carbon capture and storage at a large number of, of, of uh, coal burning power plants. And uh, begin to use coal burning power plants to produce H2, that is fuel for uh, uh, fuel uh, cell vehicles. Uh, and to also add those plants to use carbon capture and storage. So here are the remaining eight initiatives. Uh, use, uh, convert coal to synfuel, that is convert coal to gasoline at plants with carbon capture and storage. Uh, so there's a big emphasis here on carbon capture and storage. Uh, double global nuclear capacity to replace coal bearing power plants have a tenfold increase in wind electricity capacity, have a hundredfold increase in solar electric capacity. We've talked about all of these. Um, have a 40,000 square kilometer worth of PV panels uh, that would uh, make hydrogen gas for fuel cell vehicles. So that's a big project, have PV just making uh, hydrogen gas for fuel cell vehicles. This depends a lot on fuel cell vehicle technology working out. Have a 12-fold increase in using biomass to produce bioethanol. That would be a somewhat uh, controversial project because of the, uh, the fact that uh, biomass for bioethanol, the way we're doing it right now using corn, would uh, take away food. And we're going to need uh, food to feed a lot of people in the future. Uh, eliminate tropical uh, deforestation, and we're not doing very well with that. That's a really big uh, thing to uh, stop the deforestation of tropical rainforest. And to uh, use conservation tillage globally, conservation tillage is a way to basically prepare the soil for agricultural planting without uh, taking the carbon out of the soil. So keep the soil so that it maintains its carbon content. So these are 15 really powerful ways to reduce carbon emissions. Uh, it's kind of, uh, you look at these, which, one, which, one, which nine of these would be most effective? It's a good question. So if you've been following the, the, the process by which the UN is coming up with a international treaty for dealing with global climate change, you might get a little discouraged because it's a very slow process. There's always this, you know, it's a political process. There's always this back and forth trading. And there's fear that there won't be an effective treaty or by the time the treaty begins to be effective, there'll be a lot of damage already done by climate change. So in the meanwhile, what can we do? Well, all of us have our own lives and our own communities that we live and work in. Uh, and we can take individual action to do the best that we can with dealing with climate change, our own climate change footprint uh, in our own lives and our own, and our own sphere of action. And we'll talk about that in the next presentation.